Okay, good afternoon everyone. It's really my pleasure today to host a sharing session. And before we, we start the session, I would like to briefly tell you the, um, what Asia HLM is about. And thereafter, we'll have a brief introduction of our speaker today. And after that, the topic and also the speaker will start her presentation. And towards the end of the uh, uh, presentation, we also have questions and answers session. And after that, that will be, that will have concluded the session today. Okay, so I would, taking this opportunity, I would like to, to tell you something about myself and also HHLM. And my name is Rita Chu. I've been in the human resources field for over 20 years. I have a passion to be a human resources professional. I also have a passion to create a platform whereby all the human resources professionals, especially in Asia, can share and exchange ideas. That's why we have founded uh, HHLM. And, that, and Asia HLM basically is a networking platform whereby we provide opportunities for all our counterparts, professionals to share ideas and exchange. And we usually organize sharing sessions uh, two times in a month. And today we are really, really honored and pleased to have Tracy Yap, the um, HR manager with General Electric Power Malaysia to host our session today. And let me give you a brief introduction about Tracy. Tracy is currently, as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the HR manager for GV Malaysia, handling the gas power systems sub-business that has over 200, uh, sorry, 300 employees in Malaysia and is directly supporting the business leaders all across the region. Prior to this role, she held a dual role as APEC GE Corporate HR Organization and Talents Development Manager and Malaysia Healthcare HR Manager. In that role, she managed the entire GA PET leadership programs, such as the financial management program, graduate engineer training program, digital technology leadership program, and commercial leadership program, plus talent development and planning for the finance function region wide. She also supported the HR management of GE Healthcare Malaysia acting as a strategic business partner for talent, for talent related matters. She started her career with GE in finance because of her passion in human resources. After that, she moved into this field. And Tracy is an honors graduate of Monash University where she earned a bachelor's degree in business and commerce, majoring in economics and finance. Today, she's going to talk about how big MNCs like GE are jumping on the bandwagon of using leadership programs as a key method of attracting the best talents, developing and retaining them. She will also share on the structure, pros and cons of GE's leadership programs, as well as her own take of how effective leadership programs are in retaining millennials of today, since she's also a proud millennial herself. So without further ado, I would like to have Tracy take the control and then share with us some of the, the details of the program at GE. Tracy, your call. Thanks, Rita. Uh, thank you once again for inviting me to speak on your platform. It's truly an honor um, mm -hmm. to be you know, the first um, speaker to, to be broadcasted live uh, online on the Facebook group as well. So it's truly an honor. Um, and Rita, I, I find that you're very inspirational and uh, thank you so much once again. So um, as Rita you know, introduced, my name is Tracy Yap. I am a born and bred Malaysian, I'm currently based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and I'm uh, working with General Electric GE. So um, GE has been um, a great company to work for and today's sharing is primarily on the leadership programs that um, GE has. So um, as Rita introduced, I, I joined GE through a leadership program. So I, uh, I spent two years in the financial management program, which is the finance track uh, leadership program. And then I came out, did uh, a bit in finance and decided that, you know, my true passion lies in talent development and in people. Hence, I moved, you know, boldly into HR. Um, no regrets. Um, and, and in my HR um, scope, you know, I handled the leadership programs of the region as well. So I came full circle, as you might, 
you might say. You know, I started off in a program as a program member and then I ended up managing the program as the program leader. So I, I, I know the, the, the real pros and cons of the program from growth an experience perspective as a member and also as a manager. So I would like to share my experience today um, um, in our 30 minutes of show sharing, just to give you an insight of how leadership programs are run at GE right now, um, in particular GE Asia or Asia Pacific, um, because I would like to, to think that even though our programs are standardized across globally, there are still a bit of nuances uh, that are, you know, uh, culturally affected or, or geographically affected. So um, please do not quote me um, to your folks in the US or the Europe um, because it might be different, but the main structure still remains the same um, because these are global leadership programs. Um, so, you know, GE has been long running um, in leadership programs. The FMP is an acronym for Financial Management Program, which is the finance track. It started in the 1903, so that was almost uh, actually more than a decade ago, uh, right? So, not not a decade, sorry, a century ago, right? A decade is ten years. So, um, you know, it's been long running, and that you know, people like to say that GE was one of the first few companies who 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 realized the potential um, and the and the magnitude of leadership programs if done right. Um, so I think you know it, that there could be some great learnings to be to be made from um, how we structure the program. So basically, GE has or had almost one leadership program for every function. Uh, so we have one for HR, one for finance, uh, engineering, commercial, operations, um, and the list goes on. You know, in in the in the in the back in the old days, we had even for communications and whatnot, but. Right now, we're trying to streamline everything to the core products. So uh, finance is still a very strong one, engineering as well. Um, HR is still good. Uh, commercial is up and coming um, because we, we acknowledge that, you know, the power of commercial right now. Um, so these are still really core programs in our region. Um, and also something that's come up in the past few years is something called the digital program. Um, in the past, we had what we call the IT leadership program, but right now it's rebranded to digital, which is basically, you know, uh, on, on your data uh, analysis and also big data uh, comprehension, um, you know, coding and whatnot. So I think these are the core programs that we have right now or still have in the region uh, and it continues to evolve. Uh, but basically the structure of it is always a two-year program. Um, and depending on which program you're in, it's either a four, six months rotation or an eight, three months, uh, uh, three, eight months rotation. But it's always for a period of two years. And while on these two years, um, you are given some in-house coursework to go through. Um, for the financial program, especially, you are given some exams to even sit for. It's kind of like a mini MBA, we like to call it. Um, the, the whole point of it is it's not just to teach, you know, fresh graduates how to do accounting or finance in GE because things could be different from how they learn it in the university, right? So we would like to standardize everyone's understanding and hence that's the whole purpose of giving them the coursework and also the exams. Um, putting, putting a grade to it just, you know, ensures that people pull up their sleeves and, and actually put in the work. Otherwise, they would feel that, you know, uh, it's, just a, it's just a mock task, you know, we're not graded for it. We don't have to put in too much effort. So that's the whole reason of putting a grade to it. And believe me, millennials are very, very competitive, right? I think anyone across the, the generations, you know, you pick the top of the top of universities, you put them together in a class and they just, they just try to eat each other up. <laughs> uh, but jokes aside, you know, that's the whole point of having exams or, or making it graded uh, for them. Um, and then the, there's also minimum and maximum scores. So the whole point is to ensure that they, they know how to time manage um, their work because they still are expected to perform uh, well in their full-time jobs and they are given full-time responsibilities as to any other jobs out there. The, the only uh, um, additional point is that they have to study at the end of the day. So they really need to time manage well. Um, so that's across our 
uh, finance and engineering track. Uh, but the other tracks do not have uh, a graded exams, uh, but they do have similar coursework um, and conferences that they attend. So typically, our, our structure or syllabus is uh, very much done in-house. So our global learning center um, in the USG, Cortonville, there's a team um, that develops the, the syllabus or the topics that these uh, leadership program members will learn. And how they determine it is really through uh, talking to the business leaders, uh, to the function leaders to, to come up with what really is um, the, the most important for for example, for a finance person or a HR person to learn what skill sets uh, are required to be a successful um, leader in their specific functions and then really to put a structure around it um, and, and to put some you know, uh, textbooks around it and, and really to groom uh, the person or the individual through the two years. So two years is a, is a relatively short time as some might argue. Um, but coming from the program, I realized that you know, two years is, is just enough uh, to give you the breath because every, every rotation you go on, uh, you're expected to be either in a different uh, sub-function uh, or a different business, right? So for example, myself, I went through uh, three different business, G businesses throughout my two years. I was in power, uh, then G oil and gas, and then GE Healthcare, and I was in Malaysia, Singapore, and, and Paris in France. So it gave me different cultural experiences, and it gave me um, an insights into how GE worked across these different countries and different businesses. Um, but I was still all the time in finance, right? So I was in uh, corporate finance, uh, I was in fp &E, I was a controllership, and then I was in tax, uh, uh, cash, sorry. So it gives me different viewpoints of what finance is because um, most people coming fresh out of university, they group the topic as one, right? HR is HR, finance is finance, engineering is engineering. And then they get, when they come into programs like this, they get to experience the different takes of finance or HR or engineering. Um, and they realize that, you know, they might like one part, but really hate the others, right? Like in HR, you have comp and ban, you have operations, you have, oh, you have TD, your right, talent management or development. Some of you might hate some parts, some of you might, might love some parts, and that's the whole purpose of the programs. Um, and I find that it's really good. Uh, for myself as a member, it really gave me the insights as to what parts of finance I enjoy doing and that I'm good at doing. Um, and then, you know, it, it gave me a better viewpoint of what I would like to go into after I finish my program. So that's the whole gist of the leadership programs in GE. Um, I find that, that um, coming up with your own leadership program is uh, something that you might not want to jump entirely into immediately. Uh, you would like to definitely evaluate the needs and the, the demand um, of your business. For example, right, um, leadership programs could be costly to manage and uh, to, to do it effectively as well, you need to have scale. Otherwise, people, you might not have the bandwidth to attract the, the right talents. If, for example, if your company is a small startup where your brand is not really known yet by the industry or by the community, uh, it would be hard for you to attract the, the right talent and you would want people or students who are you know, top of their class, who are inquisitive, who are your all-rounded people, right? So um, without a proper corporate brand, you may not attract them. So that's one. Um, so my whole point is that you, a lot of companies out there are very excited when it comes to leadership programs. Uh, I've been speaking to a few um, talent uh, development managers across at conferences and they always said oh yes um, I would like my company to go this way uh, to have leadership programs um, yes that is the hype right now across the companies out there it's very effective in attracting good talents and it's uh, relatively effective in retaining and grooming them um, but then again my I, I'm here to throw the question at you as to really whether your business or your company needs it. So uh, talk to your business leaders, talk to your MD about how you can really structure a good leadership program that will last. 
So a lot of companies uh, that I know of, they structure leadership programs and it works for one or two um, churns, but after that it dies off. And even in GE, it has happened. I have um, been um, leading a, a regional engineering program um, in the past few years and it was good for a few years, but after that, there, there really is no need from the business to continue um, asking for this sort of um, program members or, or, or this program. So even in big companies, there are leadership programs that could fail and it really boils down to the structure of it and the cost of it. Yeah, if there's no one to really look at your programs and continuously redevelop the structure, it doesn't have to be uh, changing every two years. Um, the core structure stays, but the topics that you teach in that, um, the conferences that you have, um, the people that you, you pair the program members up with. So it has to be maintained. The quality has to be maintained. And, and who do you put to manage the programs? That is very important. You really need a key um, functional leader. So for all our programs, we always have um, what we call an executive sponsor. So an executive sponsor is a senior business leader, usually of um, a, a C-suite level who has been uh, very experienced in the function uh, that the program is in. And we have that person be the chairman that leads the, the program, basically. He, is the, he or she is the ambassador of the program. And this person works very closely with the program manager in terms of identifying um, and, and, and um, identifying talent, um, solving issues, and, and just coming up with ideas to keep the program interesting and to maintain the quality. Um, and I have seen how good programs uh, without this key stakeholder eventually just diminishes over the, the years. So having a, a very, the right executive sponsor is very key. Um, and of course, having a dedicated program man manager as well is key. But as you know, in, in, the, in the economy nowadays, not, not all companies are able to afford um, a, a dedicated program manager, right? Most of the times you hear, the HR manager is the one handling everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so so the, the company or the corporate comes up with a good leadership program and then they just throw it to the region and say, um, okay, one of you handle it. So it's either the HR director who passes it on to the HR VP, who passes it on to the HRM, you know, if you don't have a, a, a dedicated O and T D person, an organization talent development person to handle it, then it could be it could be drowned in a lot of other priorities of the HRVP or the HRM. Um, so this is one issue that um, even you know big companies are facing, and and right now GE is going through uh, a, a transformational period, um, and the leadership program member uh, met the leadership programs were used to be handled by corporate in, in this region in APAC. But right now, uh, we are taking away the corporate layer and we are saying that it's going back to the business. Um, but then again, who's the catcher in the businesses? So this is a true um, situation that is happening in GE right now. Uh, we find that you know the HRMs or the HR business partners of the businesses have to be the catcher. But then again, you know, this is not a primary primary focus of theirs, right? There's a lot of other things. So um, then you start to see that the program members are not so engaged. Uh, they feel as if they are not um, uh, being taken care of well enough. And these are, I would say, um, tough to handle people, right? Because they are the creme de la creme of their university folk. You, you entice them to come into your company with all these perks saying that uh, they are the best of the best. We want to groom you to be the future leaders. So it sometimes gets to their head and, and they expect it's an entitlement to be taken care of, right? Not saying that I was that, uh, but I do see a lot of uh, people, especially millennials nowadays, um, acting that way. Um, entitlement is, 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 is a key word that they often use. Um, and these people would, would leave you um, after the two years or while they go through the program if they feel disengaged and if they feel that um, they, don't, they don't fit into your company or that their purpose um, is, is misaligned. So I, I think, you know, there, there are pro, definitely pros of leadership programs, uh, but then there's a lot of costs um, 
to to consider and cost not just in monetary um, uh, sense you know it could be in any other sense um, so I I have already uh, kind of given you the, the basic foundation of how a leadership program should run um, it should never be too long. Uh, two years, I feel, is just right. Um, it should always have rotations, different assignments to, to kind of pull and stretch the, 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 the hire or the talent that you've brought into your company. Always expose them to top um, or leadership. You know, it's always good because you expect them to be future leaders of your company. It's always good to have them paired with a good leader who can guide, mentor them, you know, kind of roughen up smoothen out the rough edges um, and also to have them network with uh, leaders in your company on, on a regular basis so that they have that leadership mindset from the, from the get-go. So um, that's definitely very important. Exposure to different businesses and different business leaders uh, throughout the two years um, is very important. So that basically is the structure of your leadership programs and I can't exactly go into the details because it would really heavily depend on your business, uh, your region, um, ex um, um, exposure, and, and how your leaders want it to run. But basically, that's, that's the gist. Um, and then, so th those are the good parts. Uh, the cons, I would say, will really have to consider whether there's a pure need for it in your company and how you're going to sustainably um, um, continue the program, you know, even for more than two, four, six, eight, ten years uh, and have it as a legacy that, that people would easily recognize um, from, from hearing your, your company name. So basically, that's about the leadership program. I would pause there for any questions that you might have uh, through Rita or anything. Mm. Okay, thank you, Tracy. I really, um, thanks very much for your um, sharing on the structure of the leadership program at GE. I have the following questions. Um, uh, say, for example, you, you mentioned that there are um, uh, 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 different, different um, pro uh, leadership program on different streams, right? One is finance, the other is HR, and then the commercial is coming and so forth. Say, for example, you took the one uh, for finance. And then the, in these two years, actually, you were exposed to different functions of finance, right? Then how about the other functions in the, in the corporation? Were you given the chance to be exposed to all, all the other, uh, other departments or other functions? Yeah, so our leadership programs rotate the program members within a, a particular function and not across functions. Uh, I do know of many companies that does um, mm -hmm. uh, across function rotations, mm -hmm. uh, but GE has selected um, or found that it's more effective to groom leaders for a particular function by only rotating them in the function itself. So finance folks will only do finance rotations, HR in HR and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yes, but then again, there are, I, do, I have heard um, that some other regions in the world have actually practiced um, a mix. So whereby out of four rotations, three is done in the main function that they were hired into and one rotation is done in a different function. But then again, this could be isolated only for that region or that particular country um, and I can't comment for. But for Asia Pacific, we, we, we basically do only in the, finance, uh, the function itself. I see, I see. Okay, understand. And you mentioned that uh, one, of the, um, one of the things that you have to do in this two-year program is to take examinations, right? Yeah. And then so you, you, need, you really need to spend some time uh, to study. Mm -hmm. And then if just somehow you failed, what will you do? Yes. Will, you be, will, you, will, not, will you not be able to pass the, the whole program or just uh, the company will give you another chance and how would the company handle it? <laughs> good, good question. Um, so for the finance track, it's pretty stringent. Um, the first rotation or the first six months, basically you're allowed to only fail once and take a, a reset. So if you fail the second time, you are asked to leave the program. So they are that straight. Um, and the passing mark is 85. Uh, at least from my time, it was 85. I'm not sure what it is right now. Um, so... But this 85 is not just purely based on one test, right? It's a, it's a combination of coursework, marks, um, assignments, and then in-class in participation. It's a lot like university, really. So um, it's an aggregate of all of that and two, two test papers. 
and if you get above 85, you pass. If not, you fail the first time, they allow you to reset one time, you fail the reset, you're out of the program. And this is uh, across the globe, so not just in Asia Pacific. It's a practice that is done across GE globally. Mm, so see. yeah, it's pretty stringent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I could feel that. Then if that's the case, then would you share with me some of the, um, the like the syllabus of this, uh, of this uh, mini examination? Mm. Is, that, is it something very academic or something which is really related to your job? I think it's more academic. Um, it's basically a foundation of finance all over again because we do have people who are in a program that are not from the finance track and I'm using finance because I'm familiar with it I came from it um, but then again substitute whichever function that you, you would like to um, but basically it's we, we don't we don't only limit it to the finance or accounting graduates in the past we have people from engineering um, from um, psychology from social sciences as well because we look at more of the character and attitude um, but you still have to have the basics of finance right like um, mm. your asset equals to liability plus equity that mm. kind of basic thing which anyone would any business student would know mm. um, so so basically that's how we we, we test for the person uh, before they come into the company but um, the, the, the syllabus is very much similar uh, to a foundations in accounting for example so the first six months is a, a, a refreshment of your your accounting foundations so they will teach you all the basic things you know what's mm -hmm. debit what's credit this and that um, mm -hmm. then the second uh, second syllabus uh, during my time, it was um, uh, uh, it's different from now. Again, it changes, right, according mm -hmm. to the business needs. But uh, for example, um, the next six months could be more of um, your debt. So how do you how do you deal with debt, equity, and whatnot? So more of the financing part. And then the next six months could be more of your assets and liabilities accounting. Uh, how do you deal with asset? How do you deal with liability? Because there's a different specific accounting for that. Um, and then after that, it could be controls because in accounting, there's a lot of mm -hmm. controls uh, that I put in place, right? What's right, what's compliant on, on an accounting side. So mm -hmm. you read case studies, you learn more, um, uh, you ask more questions. And then, and the case studies are, are very much uh, GE based. So uh, we have long running history and many, many countries around the uh, world, right? So, so they basically just pick up points. Um, uh, what has happened in which country when, um, sometimes they also use external external examples, um, and then the last six months could be more on a strategy. So they'll teach you how to strategize. Um, as a business leader, as you grow higher in a corporate ladder, you do a lot of strategy work rather than accounting or groundwork, right? So um, they try to try to turn your your mindset to think strategically. Um, if you are a plant finance manager, how do you manage your your assets, how do you manage your overtime, how do you manage um, production, uh, demand and supply. So, so mm -hmm. they put us in a simulation type of game, uh, mm -hmm. which is really fun. It's a, it's a team coursework. Um, so every week we get a new level unlock kind of thing. So like a, a new case that adds on to your original case, right? So firstly, they give you a scenario. Then the, as weeks go by, they always give you a, a different uh, thing to top up. Like, okay, this week you are going to produce 200 units of so-and-so. How do you manage the cost? Uh, you have the option of buying a new equipment or you have an option of um, uh, re, 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 revamping your current equipment, you know. So, which one do you choose? So, it's, it's kind of uh, things like that that, that um, is put into the syllabus. So, I think it's very um, academic, but it's also very uh, business-related. But then again, depending on which business role that you're in. Because if you're not in a plant setting, for example, then it doesn't really apply to you if you're more of a, a corporate setting. But then again, it differs according to the person uh, and, and what role the person might be getting after the program. Mm. Yeah. Okay, understand. How about in this two-year program, would you, would, uh, would you be given a chance to learn how to be great leaders by uh, telling you that these are the skill sets that are required as a, a, a leader? And were you given a chance to learn how to be the one? Yes, definitely. So uh, from all the networkings with the senior leaders, so mm -hmm. that's how we pick up their soft skills. Uh, we ask them questions and then they refer. Ah. Um, there is no classroom training that, that mm. um, the program members go through. Uh, there is one called Activating Your Leadership Journey. But it's basically a week um, uh, 
classroom training where you go and meet up with the other program members from across GE. Um, mm. So we typically have classes in uh, the big hubs of the region, like for Asia Pacific, it's either in India or in China, in Shanghai. Mm. Um, and then Europe has it in UK and US has it in New York. Um, but basically, this is a one-week course that all leadership program members have to go through. And again, it's, um, it's talks, it's a seminar-based uh, a series where they invite senior leaders to come and talk about different parts of leadership, mm. how to activate your own, uh, how to find your own leadership style. So there is, you know, a, 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 a test where each one takes to figure out what is their leadership style. And then there's a game again, uh, a simulation game uh, where they play um, and kind of um, hone their strategy part of um, the leadership. So that's the only classroom training. But apart from that, it's all through mentorship. It's all through networking sessions mm. with the senior leaders. I see. So in this one week course, uh, yeah. your company did, did not invite any external trainer? For... No. Oh, okay. It's so, all delivered by your own leaders. Wow. Own leaders, uh, and there is a GE Learning, so GE Crotomil, uh, they are the one who developed this course. Um, and then they are the one who send their, their, the people to train uh, or to deliver the course. Oh, I yeah. see. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, but then again, the model could have changed right now. Um, there's always benefit from inviting an external party to give an external viewpoint, right? So they could have um, maybe invited a few extra people to, to feed into the sessions. But mm. then again, I'm not too sure. I see, I understand. So uh, when you first started this program, did the company mm. tell you that, okay, after two years, you will end up in this position, maybe another two years, you will end up in another position. Were, were, uh, did they tell you anything about your career plan? Well, they didn't really want to define the career plan. Um, and this is one thing we don't want to do, um, even as, as HR uh, professionals to the current leadership program members, because uh, things are changing all the time. You know, mm -hmm. every six months, um, the organization change. And I, I always joke with uh, the people I meet at external conferences that I don't have a recent uh, enough name card because I can't keep changing my name card for every time my role changes. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I keep using an old name card and I give it to them and I say, you know, the title is not the same, but um, the context are similar. So for that reason alone, we don't want to promise someone mm -hmm. something that we can't uh, necessarily be certain of. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why we tell them, it's probably for the two years that we can somehow guarantee because as a program mm -hmm. member, um, the structure is always you know similar and we can kind of um, uh, uh, program it a certain way to give mm -hmm. a certain result. But at the end of the two years, what role they get into really depends on the openings that are available in the, in the business. So we can't promise the person and say that we are going to groom you to be a, a tax expert because Two years later, perhaps we could be outsourcing our tax um, mm -hmm. services to PwC or something. So mm -hmm. we do not want to overpromise something, but what we can promise is the experience mm -hmm. on the program. Mm, I see, I see. So if that's the case, um, what is the retention rate of this uh, leadership program? Yeah. Uh, just a brief idea to tell us so that we know that, okay, how, how many people could your company retain after this mm. two, two years program? Mm. So in, in the past, um, it has always been around 80, 70 to 80%. Uh, but recently, in the recent years, um, when I was the program manager um, about a year plus ago, we, we have found that the rate has uh, dropped to maybe 60, sometimes even 50%. Um, mm. The reason is, um, you know, uncertainty. There are a, there's a lot of uncertainty within the company uh, for these program members, and you know millennials nowadays they they don't they don't quite like the uncertainty. Um, mm. They want to at least know that um, mm. what they want will be given, um, and and they always they already have what they want in mind after a year or so in the program because millennials are made up. Uh, you know they're very certain that way, right? Um, so due to uncertainty of the business directions, they, they tend to leave either midway or, you know, immediately after the program or some uh, within two years after the program. Um, second thing is competition. There are a lot of 
companies out there with similarly good leadership programs with higher pay, for example, um, with better structure. Maybe um, you know they they get to spend more time abroad, uh, and millennials like to travel. So if uh, we are not able to give it to them due to cost constraints, then they tend to leave us for another company that has um, better structure or better benefits. So competition um, of, uh, with, from other companies has risen in the past few years, and that's why we, we tend to see them leave. Um, lastly, the reason why they leave is um, to further their studies. So mm-hmm. a lot of our program members, um, they join us fresh out of university, um, but a lot of them, um, I wouldn't say a lot, maybe, maybe some of them are very entrepreneurial-minded, and uh, they want they they find that through through experience in this program they they would like to have an MBA or to further their studies um, in a different field um, and and they get scholarships and then they leave us. So basically, these are the top three reasons as to why uh, our program members has been has been leaving us in the past few years. I see. I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have come across with some leadership programs, uh, which are only. Uh, accept uh, employees who have been with the company for maybe at least two years in order to, in order for them to know about the potential and also to know about their sort of the loyalty of the company. What do you think? Do you think if you are the program like, uh, if you are the program leader, would mm-hmm. you advise your company to develop a program to develop mm-hmm. those fresh graduates from the university as opposed to de- develop those who have been to a company for or at least two years, so as for the company to see that they are really uh, would like to grow with the company and they have the really the potential to grow with the company. What do you, what what would be your 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 preference or your uh, ideas for the company? Sure, I think it will be a mix. So currently, mm-hmm. we also do have leadership programs that are only limited to the employees of the company, and these mm-hmm. are what we call the mid uh, level leadership programs. Mm-hmm. So, for example, for our uh, middle. Uh, manage, mid-level managers to go mm-hmm. up to the senior level managers. So these are all uh, leadership programs only targeted for um, internal stakeholders. Mm-hmm. Um, but the leadership programs that uh, I, I'm, I was talking about are mainly f- entry-level leadership programs. And these ones, uh, because of the demographics of the company, we do not have too many people who are, who are fitting into this uh, area where they have zero to uh, two years experience. Um, and that's why we, we look externally. But mm-hmm. if your company has, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, good talent within that demographic, and mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I wouldn't see why you should open it up to external uh, parties. You, that, you should definitely look internally and look at uh, grooming your own talent. But then again, it, it depends on what exactly your program is for, what demographic mm-hmm. it's targeting, and how you, you would like to play around that. Mm-hmm. I see. Okay. And I believe at GE, there, there would be um, leadership programs or different levels of staff, right? For those who yes. are at entry level, middle management or senior management. Yes. Have they, any, have they done any um, assessment on which level, uh, which, which type of leadership program are more effective? Have they done such kind of analysis? No, I don't believe they have done such an analysis. Okay. Um, but definitely as you go higher, um, mm-hmm. the stakes um, are, are lower, I would suppose, because um, you know, senior, mid to senior level managers have been with GE for uh, a time, uh, for a period of time. And hence, you know, by using leadership program as a method of retaining them is uh, really effective um, in, and in terms of, of developing them as well. Uh, but for, for to attract you know, newer talents to come into your company, I believe um, you know, the leadership programs are very good at attracting the talent uh, and developing them. But whether or not it's very good at retaining them, it's, it's a different, uh, it's debatable, I would say, depending on you know, which company you are coming from. Um, so I would say leadership programs differs according to the levels um, in terms of what you want to use it for either to attract, retain, or develop. Uh, so, you know, the different levels at which people come in or join a leadership program shows that the, the differences. Mm, I see. Okay. So, uh, like Tracy, like GE is a multinational company and yep. it's a big size company. Okay. So, it, it has it's a very decent uh, leadership program. And if my company is just a startup having like a 10 to 
20 how, what mm. would be advice for us to develop some of the future leaders? Yeah. So I wouldn't say that you you shouldn't have a leadership program. It's mm. always it's it's always okay to think about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but maybe it's not the right time to have it fully structured. Mm-hmm. Maybe you could have something that's informal. Um, you mm-hmm. know, always good to pair up. The the, the foundations are, are always similar across whether or not you call it a leadership program, right? Uh, you can always just pair up the, the talent with a senior leader or someone influential in the company who could mentor and groom the person. Um, and mm. always have an open, honest discussion with the person as to the career development mm. of the person. Um, mm. And then always be open to experimenting or, or um, giving this person different tasks, different assignments mm. to work on so that the person can continuously learn new skills. Um, even if you don't call it a leadership program, if you do all this, you are indirectly already putting the person on a so-called leadership program. Uh, but that's basically what leadership programs are. You 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 bring in a new talent, you pair the person with a good leader who can mentor and groom the person and basically map out the career development of this person so that they learn new skills continuously uh, through a certain period of time. That's what leadership programs are. Mm, I see, I see. Then that would be my, my last question about uh, the GD leadership program. Uh, if you have to tell us three things that you really love this program and three things you think they are all areas for improvement, what would be these things? <laughs> wow, three things. I have to think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> three things, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll, I'll start with what I like, right? Um, mm-hmm. I think the program gives you a lot of um, different cultural experiences because you get to meet a lot of people from around the world in, mm-hmm. in either the same program or a different leadership program and mm-hmm. it gives you that multicultural experience that you may not get um, if you were not in a leadership program so that's one um, the second thing is the exposure uh, to senior leaders the networking abilities or the networking um, a bit, uh, I, uh, what's that um, chances that you get to have Um, The leaders in GE really acknowledge leadership program members. So it gives you a sense of uh, either accomplishment or or, or, or when you go up to a senior leader and you introduce yourself as so-and-so from whichever leadership program. So I think that networking um, uh, level that you have is is really good Um, and not, not... uh, pe- people who are not from leadership program uh, won't get to experience this as often. So that's the second. Mm-hmm. Um, the third would be a sense of belonging. Mm. So you are in a cohort uh, of some form. It's, it's like how you were in um, university and you're part of this uh, exclusive club right? or, or a society. Um, it gives you that, that sense of uh, worth and belonging. Um, and that's what's good about it, I find. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are the three things that I really enjoyed about the leadership program. Mm-hmm. Now coming to the cons of it, um, I would say one thing is that it doesn't give you the depth of the function mm-hmm. because you are rotated every six months. Mm. Um, six months is not enough to really hone your skills in a certain thing or certain topic. Um, it gives you the the experience, but whether you are capable or, or good enough to handle that, that job um, immediately coming off the program, I don't think so. It, it doesn't groom you well enough to be um, an expert in a certain area because you, you constantly move on. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. The f- second thing is that when you come off the program, because in the program you have been you know, surround, given opportunities to, um, to network with, with senior business leaders um, and you are kind of like given this uh, branded platform to, to be on. Coming off the program, you realize that, oh, okay, this is not what, what other people go through. Uh, this is back to reality, I like to call it, right? I always tell my program members, you know, you're coming back to reality. Because a lot of people, um, a lot of program members feel that way when they come off the program. They, they feel like, oh, their, their entitlement is taken away and they are just a normal employee. And I hate that, that term, you know, but in, in, indirectly, um, 
programs like this encourages that sort of behavior in the members or in the people who have gone through the program. And I think that's, that's a bad thing. That's definitely a bad thing because as HR um, professionals, you don't want to have this um, different um, biasness uh, levels within your employee uh, population, right? You don't want to have the leadership program um, uh, person come in, in and say that, oh, I, I am uh, more entitled than who, your other employee who has worked through the business um, just because the person is coming from a program. So I think that's the second thing that I didn't quite like about being in a program. Mm. Um, and then the last thing I would say, um, hmm, I can't really think of a last thing. <laughs> um, but definitely, I think, okay, maybe the last thing would be um, the expectations that arises from you being in a leadership program. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they feel that um, because you came through your program, you are expected to stay in a company till you retire because mm -hmm. they invested so much in you. Um, but actually, you know, everyone is um, given their own choices and mm -hmm. it really depends. It's a two-way relationship, right? And any job that you take is a relationship that you have with your company or your employer. Mm. Um, if you come to a certain extent where you feel that you are always giving and not receiving mm. mutually, then it's, you, you will naturally feel that it's time to leave. Um, mm. But a lot of times, um, senior management would, would say that, oh, this person is so ungrateful. We, we took the person in um, and then we gave the person this, 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 and then now they want to leave us. You know, so I think mm. that's the other expectation that it's not so good to have on uh, coming from a, a program um, like, like this. Yeah. yeah, that's true. It's always uh, good to be a giver instead of just a taker, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for sharing with us the, uh, sure. the TV program and also to have answered so many challenging questions. Okay. <laughs> And actually, I'm, actually uh, I'm very amazed at, uh, at uh, Tracy's uh, performance today because she could do it without any strip. And uh, so we can see that Minerio is like this, especially a Minerio manager talking about <laughs> how to attract, retain, and develop Minerio. So I think <laughs> as a Minerio, you should be very proud of yourself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tracy, again. And uh, so since, since this is a recorded session, we will show it in our watch parties and uh, we will let you know of the schedule so that you'll also be available to answer questions that the, uh, the, the watchers of the participants will have. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, Tracy. Yeah. Have a good sure. day. Thank Perfect. you. Thank Take you. Care. You have a good day too. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.